Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. This is an emergency video today. Make sure you watch the whole entire thing. I'm making this video because I've been seeing so much fear, so much uncertainty, so much doubt in the cryptocurrency space today, right now for the past week or two. And it's come to my attention that many of you are actually unaware of what is going on behind the scenes. And I need to clue you in on everything, show you the state of cryptocurrency. We're gonna talk about altcoins. We're gonna talk about Decentraland. We're gonna talk about formation. We're gonna talk about the plethora of altcoins that cryptocurrency giant Grayscale is looking to add, including Solana, including Polygon, including ICP. But I wanna start right here because many of you have no idea what's actually going on behind the scenes with Bitcoin. If you appreciate this, make sure you like the video, support the channel, and let's get into it. Bitcoin bull markets tend to end with a bang, not a whimper. So is this one over? No, this one is not over, not by a long shot. Let me share with you different metrics. Bull markets are always different, but believe it or not, a 50% correction is still just a whimper when it comes to Bitcoin. This is the first metric. Free float MVRV at 1.5 is looking a lot like summer of 2017. Listen, the reason why you subscribe to this channel is because we always make things easy to understand. We break things down and we simplify it. What you need to notice here is that this certain metric, free float MVRV, near the tops throughout Bitcoin's history has always looked toppy in the red here, in the red here, in the red here. And what you'll notice is the past six months for Bitcoin has looked less like a top and actually more reminiscent of summer of 2017. So this first metric shows that we are nowhere close to the end of the bull market. Number two, Bitcoin holders have been incredibly resilient through this 50% correction. So much so, Bitcoin holders have been holding on and been more resilient than what we saw in 2013 and what we saw in 2017. My personal theory is that this is the first cycle where people realize that Bitcoin is not going away. Do you need proof? Look no further than at the UTXO value weighted mean age days. We have data on this going back in all 12, 13 years of Bitcoin's history. And what you'll notice is that this trends downwards in bull markets as newcomers store their value in new Bitcoins. This trends downwards in bull markets, especially at the latter half, the most mature point right as Bitcoin tops. We're not seeing this. We're not seeing a decrease like we saw in 2017. In fact, you know what this looks more like to me? This looks like to me what we saw in 2013 because it was still trending up in this. We had this initial pump in 2013 in the middle of the bull cycle before the huge pump, the cycle top at the end. This is an interesting metric. Most people do not know about this. Also, look at days destroyed orange. Look at days destroyed orange. It's kind of flat right now. This usually spikes when long-term hodlers move their coins. This metric has flattened lately, which confirms long-term conviction. Also, now take a look at this blue right here. Previous bulls also had more days where UTXOs at loss, blue, were zero. Again, this makes an unusual end to 2021 bull market. This is not showing that we're anywhere close to the top of this bull market. Now, this is interesting. It, it is important to note that summers have always been a mixed bag for Bitcoin. So proceed with caution. If you take a look back throughout Bitcoin's 12, 13 year history, at any American summer, you'll notice that some years in the summer or some months it's been up, some months it's been down, some months it's been in consolidation. Of course, some of these summers were in bear markets, some of these summers were in bull markets. The point is, proceed with caution. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because regardless of what happens in the short term, my conviction, my confidence in Bitcoin is unhinged. If your goal is to accumulate Bitcoin, it's important to keep an eye on this cycle and dollar cost average at the right time updates to follow so yes make sure that you subscribe to this channel we keep you updated on a daily basis and i know again everybody always says when i you know continue to show you how long-term bullish bitcoin is everybody always points out well look at how short-term bearish it is right now yes i see it and the only thing i can point to 
is that this still looks like a healthy breakout and a retest of that healthy breakout. And even on layer two, Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin fundamentally is so much stronger than every other year. This year, the Bitcoin Lightning Network has seen massive growth and continued adoption. Year to date, 42% up with Bitcoin capacity and Lightning channels. This is what I like to see if I'm going to remain bullish on layer two scaling for Bitcoin. Slowly but surely, gradually then suddenly, this is how Bitcoin moves. And the macro backdrop in general, two different things. First of all, we have yet to see more than one American cryptocurrency exchange go public. Coinbase One was a few months ago. Kraken CEO says that their cryptocurrency exchange will go public in 12 to 18 months. It's going to keep cryptocurrency at the forefront of all financial conversations and more will follow. Combine that, speaking about the macro backdrop, China's CBDC is now available at 3,000 plus ATMs in Beijing, their digital dollar. It is now possible to convert Chinese digital yen to fiat and vice versa at these ATMs. The feature is initially available in the city of Beijing, the capital of China, but we're seeing the world continue to trend digital and not just Bitcoin, guys, not just Bitcoin. It is so interesting that this cycle, as opposed to every other cryptocurrency cycle, other cryptocurrencies are going mainstream and for good reason, there's something to talk about. There's something worth noting that decentralized exchanges are doing more volume in any given period of time than centralized exchanges. That's something that people are like, whoa, I didn't expect this. Even people in crypto didn't expect this to continue like this. Uniswap recently became the first decentralized exchange to pass 0.3 trillion in trading. A year ago, it was 0.001 trillion. A year before that, it was 0.0001 trillion. A year before that, it didn't even exist. So, I mean, man, hopefully you're not still stuck in 2017, 2018 in cryptocurrency because there's been so much building and adoption going on. It's absolutely crazy how far DeFi has come but the most exciting times are still ahead. Let's talk about Ethereum. Let's talk about Polygon, which is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. This is interesting. Polygon has more than three times as many active wallet addresses as Ethereum. As of June 13th, even bigger institutional investors are migrating. Is this good for Polygon? Yes. Is this bad for Ethereum? No, this is good for Ethereum. This helps Ethereum. This is a layer two ETH solution for scaling. This is what we like to see. Grayscale looks to add more cryptocurrencies. They're looking to add Solana, Polygon, ICP, and 10 more crypto assets, bringing their total amount of crypto coins that they're exploring to 31 new possible investment products. This is how institutions, high net worth individuals. This is how you get involved in certain cryptocurrencies. And all you have to do is buy the ticker. You don't have to set up a wallet. This is how big players get involved. Solana, Polygon, formerly Matic, ICP. These are the tokens that Grayscale is considering along with One Inch, Bancor, Curve, Kava, Kyber, Loopring. These are like, this is a layer two ETH solution. A lot of Ethereum type protocols here. Near, Ren, so not just Ethereum. Universal market access, zero X. Let me know, do you hold any of these cryptocurrencies? Will Grayscale be adding any of these cryptos to their trust? They already have Bitcoin, they have Ethereum, they have Decentraland, they have Filecoin. They also have some ones that I don't get why they own it, like Bcash or like Ethereum Classic. So let me know what you think about this. Now, we don't give financial advice on this channel. Videos are not buy and sell signals. You know that it's purely informational. Then you have to continue your own research and continue to make your own decisions and take responsibility. Hopefully you have learned that some coins are better to hold for longer periods of time. Some coins are better to hold for the cycle. Some coins are better to hold in shorter time frames or just trade. There's nothing wrong with realizing profits. And for the record, I think all three of these coins have great things going for them this cycle. But my point is this, in the interest of even further transparency, I wanted to share with you a smaller cap coin, a newer coin that I hold. 
and uh, many of you have been asking, you know, what exactly are you investing in? And, and lately I've been investing in newer projects and uh, let me share with you what projects I find interesting. Formation, finance, the end of yield chasing. Welcome to cross-chain risk parity, smart farming 2.0, the, the return to absolute returns start now. So even if you don't like DeFi, even if you're not, you don't think DeFi is anything to write home about, I hope you can understand that everybody else is really interested in DeFi and, and yield chasing, yield farming. And, uh, you know, that's exactly why I thought this coin was interesting. First of all, um, they broke some records on their uh, smart or strong holder offering on the Launchpad Dow Maker. They broke some records with, uh, and this is not a sponsored review, this is just something I'm invested in that I found interesting, and some people want this information. So, you know, they broke some records on, this is the reason why I found them interesting. They broke some records on uh, Dow Maker's strong holder offering. And, and besides that, really, uh, why I found them interesting is because, first of all, they're backed by some you know, big names, Polygon, a lot of VC, a lot of venture capital. But beyond that, what they're actually doing, I think people are going to uh, be interested in. And that's really in a world where there's so much, you know, yield chasing, everybody's trying to find the best yield. They're taking a mathematical type approach and really making it basically a one-stop shop, bringing the front end to DeFi blocks. And where is it? Single click pure returns they're making it super user friendly and basically just an aggregator and how to get the best yield and you know that's this is a new project that uh, i just invested in i'm not saying you need to do it i'm just saying this is the type of stuff i'm looking at i think DeFi has got a great narrative this cycle finally guys an estate in the virtual world decentraland just sold for nearly one million dollars so this virtual world this little plot of land, pixels, the haters would call it, sold for a million dollars. This is crazy. An NFT of a set of land in virtual world, Decentraland, has sold for a record-breaking almost one million worth of Decentraland's native token, Mana. Real estate investment firm Republic Realm acquired the digital estate for nearly 1.3 million Mana. So, I mean, the point is that investing in digital real estate people are for it. And I think it's, you know, we saw such a change after the pandemic happened where people realizing the world is going digital. So uh, yeah, great video today, my friends. My name is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. Let me know what you think. Comments below. See you tomorrow.